Hello, it's Annie again. And today I'm gonna show you how to do that layered flower that I was talking about yesterday. Once again, I'm using an already folded card and I fold these to the exact size. Oh, I don't have any of the envelopes here, but there's an envelope called six bar envelope. And if you fold a card, if your original piece of paper is nine inches by six inches, and then you fold it so it's four and a half inches wide, it fits perfectly in a six bar card and I get them by the box. And I would show you one, but I don't have any right here for some reason. All right, so now we're going to do, we're going to do a flower and I think I'm gonna choose this lovely orange yellow color, which is actually the exact color of a California poppy, but we're not gonna do a California poppy today. I'll do that another day. This is a more abstract flower. So once again, you wanna get, add quite a bit of water and it's gonna be the very same technique as yesterday. Look, I got a spot of water on there, but that's okay because it will be encompassed by my circle. So you do it in the top two thirds or yeah, top two thirds of the paper. Nice watery light layer in this beautiful color. It can be any color, of course. I've done a lot that are pink and blue and even green. All right, so something else I realized yesterday is this isn't live TV. I don't have to pre prepare one ahead of time the way I did the other day. And that's why I have two of these now and I'll put them up on the site later, but I can just stop the video and come back when this is dry. All right, bye. Okay, we're back and my first layer has dried. So I could have gone off and had another cup of coffee and let it dry, but I took a bit of a shortcut and I used a hair dryer, which works when you're, when you're in more of a hurry to get your watercolor dry. So once again, just get the same color and do a concentric circle in the middle. And now we let that dry. This time, maybe I will go off and have another cup of coffee. Welcome back. Now we have the first two layers dry, but just to make sure that absolutely dries, I'm gonna do the stem. So what we want for the stem is, it could be green, it could be mostly green, dark blue, but I really like this indigo, it's possibly indigo, possibly Payne's gray. So I'm gonna do that. These are Holbein watercolors in a tube that I put in this little plastic palette. Case for Making also has incredible watercolors and I have lots of those as well. So let's do a stem. You just attach it to the bottom, do it all the way down to the bottom, attach it at the bottom of the flower, do it down to the bottom of the paper. And now we're gonna add some, some leaves. So there's two ways that I do leaves. The first, way is to just make a leaf outline and fill it in. But this is a fun way too. With a brush that's as big as this, you can start with a point and then press the belly of the brush into the paper and come up to a point again. So they make um, slightly different leaf shapes, but both of them are really fun. I think I'm going to do the pressing the belly of the brush into the paper technique. 
for three leaves on each side. And of course, this is a graphic type of flower. No real flower looks like this. This is more in the world of Marimekko or that wonderful Irish designer whose bags I just bought year after year, Orla Kiley. So now the middle part of the flower and you just load up your brush. It's still quite wet, but heavy on the pigment. There you are. It's a very, very simple watercolor layering technique to have this beautiful little graphic flower that looks cheerful. And I hope you're all doing well, and I'll be back later with more stuff. Bye.